Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. I'm not going to keep this one too, too long. Ultimately, I just want to give breaking news. And damn good breaking news at that. Jared Beck, the embattled attorney, the, the attorney that just would not shut up and would not go away and stuck to his guns, has persisted. The DNC fraud lawsuit case is going towards oral arguments. Jerry Beck put this up on Twitter a few hours ago. Good news on the DNC fraud lawsuit front. The 11th Circuit Court has determined that oral arguments will be necessary. Please stay tuned. It's still alive. They've tried to put it to the side. They've tried to pretend like it didn't exist. It has to be getting fanfare. The media hasn't been covering it. The Democratic Party act like this in no way existed and this wasn't a big deal at all. But understand, this is the lawsuit that allowed you to know that the Democratic Party, right here, no, that's not what I want, this, we can legally choose our candidates over cigars in a back room. Remember that. The only reason you know they think that way and that they will make those particular arguments when they're making their deliberations from a political standpoint is that Jared Beck dragged their asses to court because they disenfranchised and cheated millions of human beings who gave millions to the Democratic Party for that election, for Bernie Sanders. Where you said millions to Bernie Sanders. The point that Jerry Beck is making in this case is straightforward and simple. And let me make sure my sound is okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm bad at doing two things at once. All right, there we are. Yeah. His, his point is simple. His, his point is extremely simple. The Democratic Party and the Republican Party are corporations. People don't see them that way. They see them as political institutions, but for all intents and purposes, they are legal fictions or corporations they have a corporation that for the most part is trying to take over the levels of power for a particular institution meaning in this case the government you have a bus the republican party and the democratic party are the bus drivers the bus in this case is a mental conception of what the government is you have somebody who's driving it but they don't necessarily own the thing that they're driving now the democratic party has a primary process in that primary process Two candidates are running. No well, multiples, but in this case, we have two people who we're talking about. Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton. Now, the Democratic Party, yes, they're a corporation. Yes, they can choose a candidate in a back room if they wanted to choose a candidate in a back room. With one caveat, one very clear and distinct caveat. If you choose a candidate in a back room and none of us participate in the process, the world is good. Nobody cares. Everyone goes about their devices and you lose your election. Now, if you come out to the camera, however, and you tell me this process is fair, if in your bylaws you tell me this process is fair, if there is one grinning idiot after the next that comes on television and says, this process is fair and I'm from the Democratic Party and you can trust us and there is no way we would do anything. And not just that, some of the attack dogs will come out this process is fair and you guys are just being sore losers. Bernie Sanders is just losing. The guy calls himself socialist. He has wild hair. Public just doesn't like him. You guys are just sore losers. People with eyes and people who weren't necessarily biased hacks in the process looked at this and says, this process is not fair. This process is being dishonest and you guys are gaming the system. Whatever degree of gaming you want to use, whatever degree of rigging you want to use, we can agree we can have this argument on the degree of rigging, but let's at the very least admit that there was rigging. If you want to go with the Donna Brazil model of saying, look, Hillary Clinton was funneling money or, or laundering money through the state institutions, and she was able to kind of sew up this kind of inter-party loyalty, meaning Deborah Walsman Schultz essentially gave over the reins of the DNC to Hillary Clinton. Now, the DNC... And the, the institution itself is supposed to be a fair, impartial, biased 
I mean, impartial actor in this process. And we're being told the entire time that the DNC is a fair, impartial actor in this process. And yet, the person who's running in the contest that is supposed to be fair and impartial has complete control of the reins of that institution that controls the process. How on earth can something, a contest, be fair when the person who's running in the contest is controlling the contest? So come on. Bernie Sanders and his supporters, those supporters gave him $200 million. $200 million. Small donations. Bernie Sanders talking about 13 what, $27 at a time. $200 million. And they gave it to him under this model that the process that he was running in was going to be fair and impartial. That the DNC wasn't going to put his thumb on a scale in regards to the person that they wanted. All of it was under the idea that it was fair and impartial. Now, if these people came out and they said, look, we have a candidate that we want in this race to win. We prefer Hillary. We're with her. Obama, for the most part, did what he had to do in order to win the race and told Hillary Clinton he'd back her up. And so that's the person we backed during, when the time came around. And let's be honest. He lines up, for the most part, with her anyway, more so than the Sanders, because Sanders is really what Obama said he was when Obama was running. If they came out and said, we're with her. We're not impartial. We're with her. You could send your money to Sanders, but we are going to do things that are necessary to try to get her over the hump, more so than Sanders. If they would have said that, nobody in their right mind would have sent Sanders a red cent because nobody is going to send money to somebody in a process that's rigged. The disparity between those two things, meaning the fact that people would not have sent money and invested their energy into a process was rigged versus you being not being deceitful and pretending as if this thing is impartial and everything else. I'm saying this somewhat poorly, but the point that I'm making here is the moment that you would have revealed to people that you were being unfair in the process, those people would have stopped sending their money. You never revealed that to those people. You pretended as if you were fair and impartial and those people continued to send their money to process what if decision had already been was a foregone conclusion to some degree. They cheated. And they weren't telling people that they were cheating. Instead, they said, this is perfectly fair. This is perfectly unrigged. We're not cheating. The world is great. We're completely united, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it was all lies. Jared Beck took them to court and he said, look, if they told people that they were rigging the process, nobody would have sent money. They didn't do that. They lied. They continuously lied and said this was fair. This was impartial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, People sent 200 and something million dollar under the idea that this was a fair process. The Democratic Party lied to them in this political process, and those people should get their money back. It was fraud. You told me something that wasn't true, and in telling me something that wasn't true, I ended up giving money and resources and energy. Not to mention the amount of time that people were putting into the Sanders campaign, the energy they were putting into it. The mental investment, the fighting, these people were soldiers for this man. And it was for naught. The process was rigged. The case is still going on. Fucking A for that. And congratulations to Jared and Elizabeth Beck. They put their energy into it. Congratulations. This is fucking awesome news. So, like I said, I'm not going to keep this long. Um, there are people here. Jamal is going to get on the Trump train just in time for 2020. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. I hate to tell you, man, Trump is a detestable human being. And I know some people think that Trump is fighting the globalists and all this other stuff. Trump is putting alligators in that swamp. I I've done a video where I've listed like 10 things that are atrocious that Donald Trump is doing. And even still, the polls have not necessarily left them. Um... Because the Democratic Party is just that ridiculous. So, but yeah, no such thing. No such thing. Um, Danny Knapp, talk to me. Yeah. The neocons got his brains and his heart. Are you talking about H.A.? I don't think H.A. is a neocon. In fact, I think it's the opposite. I Look, I, I think if you're looking politics... Purely through the lens of action and consequence. How do I get accomplished 
what I want to get accomplished in the world without dealing with any of the other fallout. How do I get accomplished? What I want to accomplish? And you find yourself in a two-tier political system. What I would say is what H.A. and I are saying are similar. It's funny. It's, it's, I guess I never thought about it this way. But it's similar, but it's not. It, it's dramatically different, but at the same token, there are shades of it that are similar. What I mean is, yeah, 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 yeah. There's similarities, but it's not the same. It's dramatically different. H, both, both of us look at the situation and say there's nothing pushing on the system. Like, there are no movements. There's nothing, like, dragging and trying to pull the system in order to kind of compel behavior in the Democratic Party, meaning you have no leverage in the system. None of the groups, blacks, Hispanics, poor whites, um, workers, labor, 90% of the population should have control of the party apparatus itself, but it doesn't. The people are fundamentally broken up on this thing of race. Democrats do this. I mean, Republicans to some degree with whites, but break, all of these identities are broken up with this idea of race and everything else, race, sex, gender, and all this other stuff. When the real thing that they need to be unified on is this idea of economics. But unifying people on the idea of economics hurts the Democratic business model, business model dealing with this thing of cash. How do you change that? Meaning, if you have a party apparatus that's come up with a gaming of the system where there are no movements pushing against that party apparatus, and that party apparatus has cash, you know, digging dollars in their assholes on a daily basis, and, you know, they're open about this now, where they would say, you know, the hierarchy in my office is the person who's paying me. You saw how the things were running with the Clinton Foundation and Clinton herself. You saw how Obama got billions of dollars and just so happened to protect the banks. These people are greased with cash agrees with it and there's nothing pressing on the system to get them to behave any other way how do you change that model when that model seems ossified in the way that model is changed uh, it's not crazy for somebody to say you need a godzilla to attack king kong the only way you get democrats to change is for them to lose i think that's true i think you need a doom bringer you need somebody standing out the door with a bat that says you are going to lose your election over and over and over and over and over and over again until you are either abolished or you changed. I don't particularly care which. Now, I make the point that you should drain all of your support from the Democratic Party. That support should be invested in Greens or, or Democratic Socialists of America or whatever. Something that's not them. As long as they have your support, they're going to continue with the same gamesmanship that they've been playing. They've been screaming Russia and Trump. Do you know that a third of the people in this country haven't been able to get access to either food, clothing, like they've been insecure in regards to either living situation, getting drugs, food, medicine, something to that effect. You have a homeless population that's rampant in California. You have half of the country living off a low wage or, or in poverty wages. You have scientists screaming at the top of their lungs that the climate is coming, you know, there's an asteroid that's about to hit the planet. And the Democratic Party has been talking nonstop about Trump and Russia. And they found Twitter and Facebook ads. Are you fucking kidding me? How do you get that party to change when that party has no impetus to change? When there's nothing that's pushing on that party to get it to change? I understand that some of these well-meaning people think they're going to board the ship and all this other stuff. They've been putting their thumb on the scale all throughout the United States. And you've had liberals arguing that it's okay for them to choose the workable point of view that they want in the world itself. Meaning, it's okay for them to be ossified and to not change, despite the population looking for change. The Democratic Party lost labor. Many of those labor people who were Democrats went to Trump. That's how bad off they are. They're feckless and worthless as a party. But, if you can compel people through fear, meaning you have, again, lefties, you have these people who are somewhat independent, who are talking about Lynn or Trend to the left. You have blacks, Hispanics, labor, terrified of the Republican Party. The Democratic Party has moved so far to the right that the Republican Party has become batshit crazy. And the Democratic Party has started to use that as its business model, understanding that if they can scare the shit out of people, then the people don't necessarily look into the vacant husk of a corporate entity that they are. How do you change that? I think AJ has made the point of saying the way you change that is by breaking 
them entirely. You break them over and over again, and you use what the Republican Party is to do it because you don't have anything else to hit them with. Now, I make the point that I don't vote Republicans. I think those people are vacant, just as vacant, if not more so. I think they're more honest about their vacantness, but they're just as bad, worse in some respects. And I don't want to put my name to something that's horrific. These people are monsters. Democrats aren't any better, but those people are monsters. I'm not voting for monsters. Now, that being said, you could make an argument that says, look, your strategy or your position of the no position, standing in the solidarity of no that drains support, ends up with the Republican getting elected. That may be true. But understand, you have nothing else. You have nothing else. The brick and the bat that you have is that they can lose. And that for them to understand it on a flesh to bone level, for them to understand it in a way they understand breathing, they need to understand that they can lose, that support is pulled away from them. When 15 million people left that party, it scared the shit out of that party. That is the only reason you're dealing with the unity commission and everything else. The party split. What the left is, is fundamentally different than what the Democratic Party is. And it has gotten itself into this weak, weird position where it's the political spouse or the, 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 the you know, similar, just like a synonym to political, to, to a, an abused spouse where it doesn't believe that it can leave and be its own thing so it sticks with the person who beats it and hits it and slaps it, making one excuse after the next why it needs to be beat and slapped. Look at the Sam Cedars of the world making excuses why it's okay to be beat and slapped. How do you change that? How do you change it? You have no movements at your disposal. The unions have been broken and destroyed all across the United States. They still exist, but they are whispers of what they were. The union leadership, for the most part, is at odds with the people who are in those unions. Those union leaderships tend to trend towards the power, you know, so it's like we're close to the, the power thing. Um, what do you have? There's no anti-war coalition. The moment that the Vietnam War ended where you stop having this thing of people being drafted and people stop caring. What the fuck? It's only 1% of the population. I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter that they're murdering people. Before. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have at your disposal? Why do you think Joe Manchin went on to TYT? Joe Manchin went on to TYT because Joe Manchin was terrified that he was going to fucking lose. Not to Paula Swergen, to the Republican that was in that race. Losing is the thing that makes the distinction. Losing is the thing that changes the politics. I, I understand that losing comes with this idea of a cost. In no way do I want to live under Republican anything. By the same token, the Democratic Party needs to change. They do not represent the interests of the people. They are representing the interests of their corporate donors. That needs to change. Either you want a world to be status quo or you want a world to change. That's what it boils down to. Now, H.A.'s strategy of kind of supporting Trump in this yeah, no, I'm not on that, that bus, but I understand where he's coming from. And again, somebody can make the argument that, dude, what you guys are saying, the end result of what you guys are saying is somewhat the same. There's a slight difference, though. I'm not supporting the other Republican Party. I'm supporting this idea of, of something else. Even if it starts at this kind of coalition of no, the coalition of no. And the reason why I call it this, this organization of no, standing in solidarity of no, you start somewhere. You start somewhere. The fact is, for as long as you continue to try and bitch and moan and scratch and have any hope that what you can do to rectify that particular thing is there, then you're going to continue to try. And the problem with trying is it's a worthless endeavor. Year after year after year, it gets across this idea that it is a worthless endeavor. It needs to be destroyed or it needs to change. And you have nothing at your disposal to do that other than using the brick, the, the bat, of the Republican Party to scare the shit out of it or bash it in the head with it. AJ's strategy is to use Trump. My strategy is to pull away support with this idea of transitioning that support to something else. Functionally, it may end up being the same, but I would say that there are differences in the way we go about it. So, if that makes sense. I, I don't think we're the same. What is the news just tuned in? Kate, the DNC lawsuit is still on. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, and let me show it again, because I've been talking about something that's completely different. Good news. On the DNC lawsuit front, the 11th Circuit Court has determined that oral arguments will be necessary. Please stay tuned. It's still on. 
It's still on. All right, this is going far too long for something that was supposed to be just this little tiny, tiny bit of news. Um, the judge ruled that oral arguments are needed. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Can you imagine if they have to pay that money back? They will be dancing in the fucking streets. That place is already cash strapped. They're barely making ends meet as it is. You have other democratic institutions running side by side with the Democratic Party itself, draining it of resources and cash. So the next Democrat that runs for office is going to be able to put their hooks into the party, just like Hillary Clinton put her hooks and talons into the party itself, just sucking the life out of it. Man, if they lose that case. Wow. What a great fucking day. Man, that would be a great day. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. What happened? What happened? 222,000 would destroy the Democratic Party, which means the third party will be able to dom dominate her way, vegetarian for life. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm getting at. That, that demolishes the party. Like, this is an existential threat to the party itself. I know they don't necessarily think that this threat is all that that's significant yet. But the closer this gets to anything that's real, not to mention just the very fact that they're having these oral arguments itself. Oh, man, that's awesome. I want to hear those lawyers defend on why cheating is okay. Explain. Explain in the lawyerly way that you explain things. Why it's okay to cheat. Why is it okay for $220 million to be given in a political process under false pretense of the organizers of that particular political process? Explain. Sing, explain. Bernie 2020 looking real good. X Factor 541. Justin Burden, not if they're voting for Trumps. I don't think they're vote for Trumps. That's what I mean. If Sanders was in that race, I don't think those people would have voted for Trump. The Mer they're just screaming for something different. The mainstream media makes it look like we're divided. We're not as divided as it seems. Your world and your reality is shaped purely by what you take in from the standpoint of the media. You have no idea what the outside world is. And I'm just being honest, just as a flat fact, you have no idea. Ultimately, you take in sources and information and everything else, and you get this kind of paradigm of the world. Media shapes what you think of the world. And I would make the case that I don't think we're as divided as we see. That's all. I honestly don't. What does oral arguments mean? It means that the judge is going to hear the Becks make their case, and the Democratic Party is going to have to make their case. And they're going to have oral arguments. They were trying to get the case continued, and the Democratic Party was trying to squash it. And the judge is saying, we need to hear oral arguments. <laughs> Larcy Sims, let's say I'm a fan of the Washington Generals. I can't say when they lose. If I do, Harlem Globetrotters will even try to stop me. <laughs> will even try to stop me. <laughs> Vegan for life, don't oral arguments mean witness testimony? Now that I don't know. So I've sent Jerry back a tweet, not a tweet. I've sent him a DM, a direct message, um, to see if he's willing to come onto the show to discuss what this means. So hopefully he takes me up on this. I would love to hear him talk about this to see what this actually means. Because I have questions too. I have questions too. Rob Illinois, Jamal, two years is a long way for anything that can happen. In the interim, the media is hardening Trump support. You think so? You think they're hardening the support for Trump? Uh, maybe. I mean, it, it, there may be this kind of reverb effect in the way that they're going about going after him. It's so over the top and shameless. They've lost all semblance of, of objectivity. I mean, they don't even pretend anymore. So, yeah. They don't even pretend. The burn, yeah, the thumbnail sums it up. The thumbnail does sum, sum it up. That's why, I, that's why I chose it. That's why I chose it. Yep. <laughs> yes, that sums it up. All right, guys, I'm going to end this here. Um, that was another story that I wanted to do that was somewhat of a big deal also, so I want to get to that one before it gets too late. Thank you guys for showing up, and a special thank you to Kate. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate your help. Um yeah, guys, I appreciate all your help for the show. I have plenty of people who send me stuff, people who tweet me stuff. Um, 
you like my little researchers on a lot of the stuff, or at the very least, my little pointers where I can't necessarily take in all of the news at all of the times. So when people send me stuff, it's it helps orient a to what you guys are interested in. Um, and our political sensibilities are similar in many respects. So it's what I am also in many respects interested in. Um, and it helps. I mean, you guys sharing my content, liking my content, it helps. I appreciate it. You guys send in super cash patrons. It helps. So thank you guys very much. You guys allow me to do what I do. And I, I say that in a real earnest way because I hated what I was doing before. I, I was at one of my out ended on this. Am I, um, at the company I was at, we were sitting in on a meeting and as they were talking, I, I kind of made the point. I was like, wait a minute. This sounds a little sketchy. I mean, you guys are, are you know, I'm not going to say what they were doing, but I was like, this sounds sketchy. I mean, what, what you guys are talking about sounds like you're trying to force people to, to do something that they don't necessarily want to do and not necessarily even telling them that that's what they're doing. Like you see some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes where you're inserting companies. It's, it's gross. It's like the way they squeeze money out of things. Like the reason why you pay so, so much for things is not because that's how much those things cost. It's because everybody along the way in the process tries to squeeze a buck out of it. So something that might have started off as 20 cents, somebody adds a dollar, somebody else adds two bucks, somebody else is five bucks. And you, the consumer, go to buy it for like 20 bucks when really the thing costs like 50 cents. Like it's, it's amazing, it's amazing how the shit happens behind the scenes. And you're, it's like every time I go get my car repaired, I'm annoyed by the process because I could see what takes place in the back end for them to um, get the parts and all. But nevertheless, I, I'm, I'm in the meeting and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, that sounds a little off. I mean, you guys are sound like you guys are forcing people into something that they don't even know that they're doing. And one of the, the owner, he's a lefty, he's a good guy, I like him. He, he's a Democrat, but he's, he's a useful idiot Democrat, I think, if that makes sense. I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, in an actual, in a good way. Um, but he's like, wait a minute, guys. I don't, I don't like this. I don't want to do anything that sounds unethical. I don't even think he was paying attention. I think he kind of popped up when he when he heard me. And one of the guys who's in on this scheme, he's like, what do we have a socialist here? <laughs> like, what are you a socialist? And it's like, no, I'm just ethical. I think you guys are being fucking corrupt. I think this is typical business operations all across in, in every capacity. You have these businesses, you have these boardrooms, you have people who are there with a vested interest of trying to maximize their profit. They try to find ways to squeeze dollars out of each and everything that they could possibly get their hands on. Um, I fucking hated that. Like, like I, I, it's like you're there and you're like, there are times, there's some places where you are where you're okay with, you know, you, you're doing something, but it's always like alienated. You always feel like, at least for me, I've always felt like you're working for somebody else and you're working to put a dollar in somebody else's pocket and you're getting a nickel for your troubles. Um, I like this. I like it. And so the, the fact that you guys allow me to do it, I appreciate it. So when I when I stop and do, when I stop and say something like this, it's genuine. I actually mean it. Um, so yeah. The little engine that could. So guys, Thank you for your help. I appreciate it. I will probably see you guys in like 15, 20 minutes because there is another thing, but I need to look into it a little bit more before I do the show. So I'll see you guys shortly. Thanks, everyone. And Jared and Elizabeth Beck, congratulations. Good job. Good job. Thanks, guys.